Hey guys, welcome back to Founders Talk. Previously, we covered the pink category of documents, and today we're going to cover the brown category of documents, which relate to the regulation of your business risk as your startup grows. In this video, we'll be covering three documents. First, the terms and conditions. Second, the privacy policy. And third, the vendor agreements. Moving on to our first document, the terms and conditions. We know a lot of startups start off by copying and pasting terms and conditions from their competitors. But as your business grows and matures and your customer base grows, you like to make sure that the terms and conditions you're using is actually applicable to your business. The terms and conditions that you need is quite specific to your business, but there are a couple of common themes involved. Number one, limitation of liability. You like to make sure that the liability that you have towards your consumers and end users is limited both in terms of quantum as well as the type of loss involved. Number two, disclaimers. You basically like to say something like, I will promise to get you good products, but I can't promise it's gonna be perfect all the time. Number three, dealing with complaint kings and queens. You like to make sure there's a customer dispute resolution clause in your terms and conditions so that when you do meet a complaint king, you can say, hello, uncle, please refer to clause 20 of the terms and conditions, which basically sets up your rights if you're unhappy with our services. So we hope a robust set of terms and conditions would be helpful in regulating your business risks. Moving on to the next document, the privacy policy. In most jurisdictions that you're operating in, there's likely going to be a personal data regime that's in place. This differs from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but there are a couple of common themes involved. Number one, telling your end user how they're going to process their personal information, what personal information is being processed, and the purposes to which these personal information is being collected. Number two, disclosure. You'd like to tell your end user who you're disclosing the personal information to and why. For example, if you have a business partner that you have to disclose personal information to in order to operate your business, you'd like to set that out in your privacy policy. Number three, telling your end users what rights you have with respect to their personal information. Given the trendiness of personal data protection in recent years, it may be wise to get a good set of privacy policy terms in place. Moving on to our final document, the vendor agreement. The importance of your relationship with your suppliers and vendors does depend on the type of business you are in, as well as the competitive nature of your business. But there are a couple of themes that you like to be aware of, which could be helpful for you. Number one, quality. Ensuring that your vendors and suppliers maintain a reasonable and satisfactory quality in when they do provide products and services to you. You can achieve that by having robust reps and warranties in your vendor supplier agreements or having a service level agreement. Number two, maybe trying to achieve an exclusive relationship with your vendor or supplier. Depending on the type of industry you're in, you might consider having an exclusive relationship with your vendor and supplier to ensure that you know you maintain a top-notch business value proposition to your end consumers. Number three, you'd like to make sure that your confidential information and IP will always belong to you. And that will be achieved by having a robust confidentiality provision as well as an IP class that basically tells the vendors that whatever is being produced as part of our agreement really belongs to me. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like this video, please press the like button and we hope to see you again. Thank you.